You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Welcome to Grawlix Bites. Uh, remember, this is the show that we do when there are things that happen in between the shows and we want to get you the news quickly. When there's things we need to talk about urgently. <laughs> quickly and easily. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, it's not, it's not the full show. It's just a bite. It's a bite. Yeah. So it should be a quicker show. But this is, as you can tell, we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Randy's here. Jesse's here. M- Melanie's here too. <laughs> so, so who knows? Who knows how quick and easy this will be? We, we, we may just talk forever on each point. Uh, but, it's excellent to to do a full show that is a Grolix bite. So <laughs> that's it. It like that's that was always kind of my hope is that it wouldn't just be the Jesse show. So I'm glad that it's not. The Jesse show was a was a a fine show though. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. I had to not Grolix myself. I was going to say it. A <laughs> fine show. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. I have to, I have to do it anyway. <laughs> you say darn, darn, darn fine show. It's a darn. gold darn fine show. Yeah. Oh, okay then don't you know let's get started <laughs> <laughs> so t- tonight on Grolix Bites or whenever you're listening uh we'll be talking about some kickstarters and that was kind of the impetus for this was that there are some pretty good kickstarters that are going to be happening and they will be ending in like 10 days or less so i uh, wanted to get that news out also we will react at the news which Tends to be one of the more fun segments of Grolix Bites. Uh Mm -hmm. And uh, we will maybe talk about Kansas City Comic Con and some of the Kansas City cons that are coming up there. And Mm -hmm. then really anything else that we want to throw in in the middle. I think it sounds great. Sounds fantastic. (laughs) Grolix. (laughs) It sounds Grolix delicious. I no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to come up with puns that incorporate Grolix, and I've found that there is really not a lot of good Grolix puns. No, mm. unless you're talking talk about dogs, and you can talk about Growlix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like angry. We, I don't know what it is. With the uh, <laughs> with the two headed nerd podcast, which is a great podcast, um, they. Uh, they call their listeners the listen nerds, which is fantastic. And so I thought we should steal that and call our listeners the Graw Lixners. The Graw Lixners? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. That's maybe steal. Call them the Graw Lickers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just sounds weird. That's that's because we kick some asterisk. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So tell us about these Kickstarters. Okay, yeah. Uh, the first Kickstarter thing that we were going to talk about was, uh, first of all, we wanted to give an update on the Oink, mm-hmm. Heaven's Butcher. Uh, that Kickstarter is over, but it it uh, raised over... F- like 50, 58? Yeah, around $58,000, and their goal was right around like twelve and a half. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like... What four or five times what they were looking for? That's, yeah, that's it, insane. It's over. Yeah, it was definitely over four hundred percent funded, which yeah. is pretty awesome. So yeah, well, you missed that one, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, we, tr- <laughs> we tried to tell you about it. Um, so right now you're probably feeling all the regrets, all of them. And if you're not, you should be. You should be. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what? You're lucky because remember when we did our uh, our interview with. John Mueller, he uh, said something about a slacker backer, so that may be happening. Mm-hmm. So you might still be able to get a hold of uh, some of the awesome rewards for that. If you're one of those people that that's smart and uh, listens, then you know just be smart and listen, and maybe you'll hear that news when it happens. When it happens, <laughs> and that's why we're here today. I mean, not for this Kickstarter, but <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's why you need to uh, subscribe to us on iTunes yeah. and, or the RSS feed and keep up on it because occasionally we do bust in with current news or events that you need to jump on top of. True, true. And, uh, you know, you can go to, you can go to our website and uh, we do all sorts of extra news and reviews and things there. And then our Twitter feed, too. 
And Facebook, there's a Facebook page. <gasps> what? Wait a minute. What? Yeah. yeah, we have a Facebook page and a group, but we'll get into that in a moment. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to sidetrack into the pimpage no, no, already. No, that's fine. That's fine. So first one up is, is good because we uh, have talked about it on the show before. We've talked about it a couple times. Um, mm-hmm. was episode eight entitled It's All Pizza, which you can find on our website. And on Classic. iTunes, see, Classic bringing episode. it back, bringing it back Yo. to the uh, pimpage there. We talked about the comic, Cannons in the Clouds, and we did that for our recent reads segment. Mm-hmm. Well, they are doing their their uh, Kickstarter to put out a trade paperback version of the first volume. If you listened to that episode and thought, whoa, this would be cool, uh, but I want to read it when it's in a trade, then you might want to check out their Kickstarter, which is happening now. Mm-hmm. I think right now they are pretty close to their goal, but they only have like seven days left. So, you know, if people want to get in there and, and kick in that last $500 or, you know, 10, or, 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you know, or 10, you know, I think they would appreciate every bit and it's gonna get them closer to their goal. Um, so, yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting because the very first Grolix bites that we did was right after Planet Comic Con this year. And I got to meet the two uh, writers, Daniel Woolley and Ann Grisham. So uh, it's kind of like checking back in with a friend or uh, revisiting horrible Super Mario Brothers nightmares of flying fish. Because this whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing takes place like in the sky. They were one of the first people to comment on our on uh, on the website, on our website about the, uh, they mentioned the 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 flying fish, the Mario brothers, flying fish nightmares. Right. Yeah. You know, one of the first comments we've had on an episode, probably we read the first issue, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a fun book and like definitely big adventure, Mm -hmm. uh, and a very cool setting. So yeah. Sky pirates are always awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And so it'd be very, it, it'd be cool to see, see them be able to put together the kind of a trade paperback they'd like to, uh, through this Kickstarter. You know, if you want more information, you can go to their Kickstarter page. We'll have links in the show notes on this episode as well. Yes. Uh, or you can search Cannons in the Clouds at Kickstarter and uh, you'll find it really easily too. So yeah, there's there's that one. And, you know, you can also go back and listen to those previous episodes to hear a little bit more about it uh, rather than read you the synopsis for something we've already kind of talked about on here. But wanted to let you know that that was coming up. Uh, the second one, uh, and I, you know, I believe that didn't Canon Cannons in the Clouds didn't they contact us and and send us that first issue? Yes, they did, which is okay. very cool of them. Well, that that kind of segues into the second one. Um, I heard about the second one because they tweeted at me, and you know, sometimes sometimes we get tweets just because we run the podcast kind of thing, and you never mm-hmm. know, like, is this a real person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's just like a press agent that's just like, hey, you should review our things. Um, but uh, they they tweeted me and they said, uh, hey, you might like our comic about depressed Satan and diabolical Pope at ourfriendsatan.com forward slash comics. Let us know your opinion. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, I wanted to hear more about that. So, you know, I, I looked it up. And actually, this is one of the... F- one of the things that we posted on the uh, the Facebook group because mm-hmm. I was like, uh, guys, this looks awesome. It's uh, the Pope and he's in a space station. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And okay. he drinks vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but not just vodka, Cthulhu vodka. So, yeah, I had seen your post in the Facebook group and uh, was definitely intrigued. And then after that, I think they uh a little spammy, but not in a bad way. Because normally if somebody's like, hey, check out this thing, random person I, I just solicited, I'll avoid it. But they did like they contact they messaged me on Twitter as well. Or oh, yeah. tagged me on Twitter as well. And I didn't notice till after your post. Mm-hmm. But it's obvious they took a look at like who you and I are. And and that we do the podcast and we're into the stuff, um, so it wasn't totally spammy. And the thing they were spamming us with is totally awesome. So, yeah, it is. Yes. So well worth it. Um, and they have the on that on that website that Jesse mentioned. They have several pages 
that yeah, are like completed. Eighteen or nineteen pages as a preview of what you can, you know, so you can read it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, um, I will go ahead and read the quick solicit so you can get a little bit more because I mean, like that that was enough to hook me. But uh, so the the premise of it, I'm going to read it right off their Kickstarter page so you don't have to. Uh, Our friend Satan is a rip roaring story about Satan suffering from a midlife crisis. He spends his night strolling around hell in a bathrobe and drowns his sorrows in Cthulhu vodka. He'd love to be evil like in the old days, but he has some serious troubles meeting the expectations of modern people. He's simply not bad enough for them. When even his eager allies, Satanists, turn their back on him, he decides to deal with this once and for all by suing the Catholic Church for defamation and travels to Earth to clear his name in court. But quickly things get even more complicated when he meets the Pope. And, well, let's just say the Pope offers him a a diabolical deal that cannot be refused. Curious if Satan will resist temptation? Help us make our friend Satan graphic novel and find out. So, uh, you know, I'm sold. I'm already a backer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that that description alone is pretty awesome. Yeah. And I read the preview pages, the 18 or so pages. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fantastic. It's very funny. There's a lot of stuff going on on several pages like even in the background that's amusing. And then towards the end of the preview, I think it's not towards the end till towards the end of the 18 pages or so, you do get, do get to see the pope. And when I saw he was on like a uh what would you call it? Like a uh like a Justice League style watchtower space oh, station yeah, thing. Yeah, like a moon base almost. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my this is this is fantastic. So yeah, it it was a lot of fun. I'm really hoping they they get a they blow it out of the water with that Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even read the eighteen pages, but just the the couple few that they had accompanying the the uh, On the Kickstarter page? Yeah. Yeah. Just that was enough for me. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to say other than back it. And it's already met its goal. So oh, at yeah. this point, you know, you just just like donating to it, A, you're gonna get the book or or whatever level that you, you back at. And then uh two, we're in, you know, stretch goal territory and some of the stretch goals are awesome. Like um, you know, if they meet their first stretch goal, you get a bookmark. Uh the next one, you get a poster. But like they're adding really cool items to it. Uh, another one was that they'll turn the trade in from a paperback into a hardcover. So oh, nice. Mm. I mean, those are some serious uh, stretch goals right there. So yeah, if you yeah. want to uh, get in, get on board with that, definitely check it out and, and find them on Kickstarter as well. And like you said, you 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 backed it already. Oh yeah, well, and you? I backed yeah. uh, Cannons in the Clouds too. I, I, I'm all and, three of these. All yeah. three of these we're going to talk about. I. Uh, I backed. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is on this. Yeah, this is like, obviously, I mean, these aren't just like, hey, here's some Kickstarters. This is like cool projects that yeah. that we believe in. Mm. Yeah. And cool people behind them. So, yeah. Um, the last one that I wanted to talk about, I don't know as much about um, this artist or this creator. Well, I really didn't know anything about our, our friend Satan either. But um, uh, this last one's called Tenko king uh tenko king is an ongoing online all ages fantasy adventure comic created by eisner award voting creator davis maiden i thought that was pretty clever he's a award eisner, voting, eisner award voting. yeah mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so that's fun he was also on um penny arcade uh did uh, like a reality show called strip search and it was uh, for like web comic creators, and they were gonna. I think they were gonna fund them if they won the show, like the contest or whatever. They would get a contract through the Penny Arcade office, um, and he was involved in that. So, pretty, you know, like pretty talented dude right off the bat. I was struck immediately by the art style, and I was like, "Ooh, this looks really cool." Um, and so that was kind of what hooked me in. And I I read some reviews from people that uh, that I admire on Twitter. Uh, kind of saying that this was going to be a brilliant book and that people should back it. And so uh, me being a sheeple, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to go. I had to go to the links and see the things. So here's the synopsis. Follow Flip, a 10-year-old boy from the Ridori village, as he takes the first steps on a journey beyond the only world he's ever known. 
Frustrated by being in everyone's shadow, Flip takes an opportunity to leave and experience life outside of his secret village. Meanwhile, a hidden society watches events unfold throughout the kingdom, looking for the one who bears the king's mark, looking for a new king. The world of Tenko King is filled with magic and monsters, unlikely friends, hidden dungeons, and dangerous foes. Bandits rule the Cinder Woods, while a cruel king forcibly recruits citizens to the fighting pits, weeding out the weak for an unknown purpose. It's a big world out there, and this is just the beginning. Again, looking at the art style, um, I kind of like the premise. You know, it sounds like high fantasy, you know, adventurous fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, looks good. And this is another one that is already funded. It's just barely funded. So, uh, you know, you could, you you don't have any risk, you know, you can get the book. It is a little pricier, like their reward levels are a little higher, but it is a hardcover book right off the bat. It's mm-hmm. not a, mm-hmm. it's not a paperback trade. It's a hardcover trade. So um, that's another one that I was kind of excited about, looked at and thought, Hey, I think that would look really good on my shelf and I want to see what it's all about. And I'm just more, I'm just more apt to read a, a, a trade. Mm-hmm. Even with web comics, I'm more apt to read it if I know that it's got like a full volume of work. And in this case, you could read it and be like, yeah, I like it. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, yeah. I like that too. It's really cute. Um, like, uh, I don't know why it makes me think, it makes me think of, maybe it's because we were talking about it earlier. It makes me think of Mario Brothers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody's so, so like round and, oh, sure. um, but it, uh, the classes of people or the like classes, the different groups of people made me think of like avatar style. Like they're each have their element that they specialize in and, um, you know, are separated, but avatar, well, the last airbender. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Society. Avatar, the, the, the cartoon on Nickelodeon, not the movie, not either movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That. Um, which I used to force children to watch. I'm like, you love this show, don't you? You love it. <laughs> you love it. I love it. For hours. <laughs> but yeah, I, I totally like that. I think it's great. And I'm excited. Yeah, I think the uh, the art style is reminiscent of a lot of things. It's kind of a, like a, it's almost anime. It's almost chibi style, but it's not. And yeah, it looks fun. You know, there's like, there's a lot of cool Kickstarter projects. And it's crossed my mind because... It also like, you know, there's kicks people running Kickstarter projects like to get their word out. It'd be cool if there was like a, sh- if, I mean, it'd be an idea for a show to like highlight Kickstarter projects, but we should never do that because Jesse will go broke. <laughs> yeah, oh, no kidding. Yeah, no, I couldn't handle that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it'd be too much. I can't, if it's a, I can't handle the big finish sales. I'm like, you know, I budgeted all my money for the month for big finish projects, and then they came out with a sale. I'm like, no, come on. <laughs> Why you do that to me? Uh, that reminds me. On the next episode, maybe we'll have time to get into it, um, which is just, what, like two weeks away or so? That yeah. It'll go up live. Mm-hmm. I also listened to the the last the last adventure with the sixth doctor. Oh, my. Oh my. I hope you didn't listen to it at work. Uh, yes, but I finished it at home. Yeah, good call. I listened to the bulk <laughs> of it at work, and I finished it at home. But uh, we don't have to get into that now. But yeah. next episode, maybe we'll talk about that a bit because I think it's worth talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll twist Melanie's arm and make her listen to it. Oh, it, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. It's the best regeneration ever. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Well, I mean, you've we've never had a regeneration that basically spans four stories. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I mean, like this is. Mighty. It's a five hour regeneration event. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, real real quick, let's take a break and talk about uh project that you're up to. Oh. So on the last episode, if you listened to, to the very end, I had mentioned a new album that I came out with. Um that album is out. You should check it out. But I had to change my artist title. So you should check out my album by the artist title of Super Science. The album is titled Blood. You can get it at superscience.bandcamp.com or my new website, which is superscience.xyz, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Ah. Um, XYZ domains were a dollar this year, uh, on sale for a dollar. And I was like, okay, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like I mentioned before, it's kind of a, um, well, it's, it's synthwave inspired, which is kind of a, a, a 80s 
eighties, what do they call it? Um, eighties like nostalgia retro. retro synth thing. Um, mm-hmm. which is kind of the scene seems to be gaining momentum. It does. And even outside of just the music, like you can start to see that eighties nostalgia thing creep into all kinds of shows and stuff, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. But it makes sense. The 80s loved the 50s, and it's about 30 years from the 80s now. So oh, oh. it must be the uh, – <laughs> 30 years must be the time when, you know, within that 30 years, people are like, oh, the 80s. And then it hits that 30-year mark or so. Yeah. And they're like, hey, remember the 80s? <laughs> well, I know. I know. some you know, like plaid and boots is coming back a little bit too. So like the nineties aren't too far behind. I think. Nope. Yep. They're creeping. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna feel real good here in about five years. <laughs> like yes, I'm home. <laughs> yeah. At least at least the, the shared nostalgia for the eighties is okay because I was really young in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as soon as the nineties nostalgia hits, I'll be like, oh, that was my like. That's that's when I was a teen. That's my high school years. When I can start busting flannels out of the closet, I'll You'll be, be happy. happy. <laughs> yep, yep. Me too. It's coming. I seen a post. Somebody posted about their uh, one of their their daughters was wearing like the current style at her school, and it was totally f- big flannel and stuff. Well, so that might have like, been Dave. That might have been Dave. Uh, yeah, I think it was. So it's yeah. it's it's coming back. He was Woo. pretty happy. <laughs> he's, he's like the first year he was happy to do back to school shopping. <laughs> so proud of her that's so weird isn't it <laughs> i don't know i don't know you like to see yourself and your kids i think a sure bit, yeah so. yeah yeah the uh the cycle the cycle of fashions and trends and mm-hmm. but yeah so jump on that cycle and uh <laughs> listen to some <laughs> it's a unicycle so wear a helmet uh, listen to some uh 80s synth inspired uh vampire horror movie inspired music uh with my latest album and with the super 80s title or artist title of super science yeah super science okay so i had to change the artist title because basically it boiled down to and it took several days for me of like of like going back and forth with the uh digital distributors customer service Mm -hmm. um basically itunes no longer accepted underscores which was the proper spelling as far as I was concerned Yeah, as their artist title. Now it worked for my first album, but not my second. And I was like, well, I should have changed my title anyway on the first album. So I took the chance to uh, find something that was a little easier to explain to people. And, <laughs> and I don't have to spell out the weird CTRL underscore. Don't forget the underscore. Yeah. 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 Caps, I could see you that. Know. Yeah. So, so you feel good about the change? I do. I mean, it's weird. It was weird changing because I went and like, I changed a lot of my URLs and, um, and that broke a lot of links. So I was trying to go back and fix some of that. Sure. And then I even went back to my first album and changed the album art, um, oh, which yeah. was, which came out like a year ago. And so it was just weird. It's a little weird rebranding because that's totally what it was. It's just rebranding. Mm-hmm. Um, but rebranding the old stuff that's been out for a while under the previous title was kind of strange. Luckily, oh, well, you could say luckily I don't have all that big of a following at this point. <laughs> so if it grows from here, that's fine. I was a little worried about losing the little bit of following I had. But most of the sites like SoundCloud and different sites like that where people can find my music, I was able to easily easily change my account title without actually like losing the people that were following me. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's good. So it hasn't really been that bad. And good. you have been gaining quite a following lately, actually. It's been growing. It's been growing. Yeah. You which know, is the, nice. The only bad thing about all this is that weird science was already taken. Cause <laughs> yeah. yeah. Weird science would have been a great title. Cause that's got instant. Like, plus I love that movie. I watched that movie over and over when I was a kid. Yeah. I liked it too. Always got that built in SEO too. I mean, uh-huh. people are going to find you by accident. Which yeah. is kind of okay. And you've got the sound of that 80s, so it would have fit anyways. So. Exactly. If they're searching for weird science, you know, listen to this. It's not that far of a leap. Yeah. Um, when uh, Axton recently uh, responded to one of your one of your social, social media, you know, like blasts and, and said basically the same thing, like uh, it does, it evokes that sound of like you can totally see a vampire like hunting people on the boardwalk. Yeah. Kind of thing, so. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was glad because I, cause you never know how it's really perceived. Like that's what I went into it with that in my mind. You know, I want to do like, I mean, it's not, not every song is going to be 
talking about vampires. There's some like audio clips in some of the songs, mm-hmm. but um, I was glad when people perceive it, even in the songs where I was like, I don't know that you're necessarily going to pick up a vampire vibe here, but hopefully a combination of the titles, the general tone of the other songs, like it kind of works to give you that impression that like mm-hmm. feel of like eighties vampire movie. And of course everybody picks up on lost boys because that's like the go-to. Um, but I'm actually not all that familiar with lost boys. I was going to say, Hey, have you seen it? I, I, it's been so long. Okay. Um, from my end for one of my go-to for 80, 80s vampires are um, uh, near dark and, Fright Night, the original Fright Night, of course. Right, right. Because I've watched both of those along with Weird Science mm-hmm. <laughs> and the original Teen Wolf and Silver Bullet. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. I, I watched those over and over when I was a kid. So Salem, well, I suppose Salem's Lot is almost 70s, but. You would fit it's... it in there, too, though, because that was. Oh, this is getting into more than I, I intended, I guess, but we'd go over to my grandparents' house and they had videotapes of stuff recorded from. HBO and we're talking like uh, 80s early 90s HBO um, so it was just these these tapes of movies and th- oh, they were gold like one oh, tape yeah. I think one tape I think was Weird Science Teen Wolf and something else you could get three three movies on a video tape. oh yeah and and it was always it's uh, one of them was Back to the Future and something else and, something, <laughs> and they were always grouped perfect so we just throw a tape in and just Every time we go over, we just watch the whole tape, mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah. And Salem's Lot was on there too because it totally, it totally oh, fit. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, and still one of my favorite vampires. I mean, like obviously ripping the Nosfer- Nosferatu look, but you know, like mm-hmm. in such a cool way, mm-hmm. like in the way that Nosferatu was all hunched over and and like almost hunchback Notre Dame kind of style. Then you had uh, oh I forget the name of the vampire, but you had him, and he's was Mr. Barlow. He uh, he's like an upright pinhead blue version of Nosferatu. Yeah, crazy. I've never met a vampire I didn't like, but I have not seen any of the Twilight <laughs> movies, so I don't know. There's I, people complain, but I, I haven't seen them. There's an interesting trend, and that's kind of like I put some thought into it while I was working on that album. Of like, you got the vampires as like the strictly monstrous type vampires, and there's been the slow trend towards like the sexy vampires to the point where they're almost to their literally sparkling in the sunlight, sexy vampires. Yeah. And the eighties was fun because you'd have that. Like I always think of fright night where you've got the, you know, so-called sexy vampire, the, the neighbor that would seduce the, the Charlie's girlfriend or whatever at the dance or at this club. But at the same time, when they'd vamp out, they looked all like monsters and stuff. And then the 90s, they were still ominous, but they were much more, much prettier in general. Um, so I like that, that middle of the road of like one minute they're sexy, seductive. The next minute they look like a crazy demon because they still like to play with practical effects. Well, even uh, Lost Boys had that that vibe to it where it was like, you know, Kiefer Sutherland and, and his group were like the bad boys kind of thing. But, you know, like that's the group you'd want to go party with on a Saturday night kind of thing until they turned into vampires, in which case, yeah, they were creepy and they hung upside down in a cave at night. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They were very bat like. So yeah. What's next. All right. Well, it's that time folks. It's time to react at the news. React at the news. So wait, they're going to reboot again. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the news is scary, kind of like 80s vampires. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be scary right off the bat with uh, a story that came from uh, Vox.com. And it's kind of old news at this point, but I think it, it bears a little bit of delving. Uh, the headline it reads, Fantastic Four's director says Fox made his movie terrible. Is he right? Oh, yeah. This has definitely been... Um all over the internet since the movie came out. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the movie is sitting at a whopping 8% on Rotten Tomatoes right now, which is incredible. Yeah. Every like out of curiosity before the show, we were kind of uh, messaging back and forth and I was like, is it, is that worse than, than Batman and Robin? And it is, it's worse than Batman and Robin. Yeah. Batman Mm -hmm. and Robin was at 11, I think. 
Yeah. And I have not seen Green Lantern, but I've heard nothing but bad things. And Green Lantern sitting at 28. So. But Green Lantern has Ryan Reynolds in it, and he's that don't, awesome. That don't matter. <laughs> well, you know, like Ryan Reynolds could have been the best part of that movie. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He, uh, but he could have done better yet. I mean, like, but, even but you he know, could have done better. I think that's valid because a lot of people's complaint with Fantastic Four is that one of, well, one of the many complaints you hear is that there's not a lot of there's no character development. No, the char- there's just not a lot to grab onto in terms of the characters. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of personality and um, chemistry. And Ryan Reynolds has got personality regardless oh, yeah, he what does. he does. So <laughs> there you go. Yes, he does. Um, so, yeah. So what's the, the story about this? The uh, the director and, and warring with the uh, net, uh, studio a little bit. Well, you know, like paraphrasing it so that we don't, you know, we don't spend too much time. But, you know, basically what it's boiled down to is that uh, this director, Trank, has, uh, you know, like ever since it started getting bad reviews, which by the way, it got bad reviews on day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's had one of the lowest opening weekends in a comic book movies history. I think pretty much immediately he came out and said, well, I had this great vision for this movie and we'll never see that vision. And he started doing that long before the movie was even released Mm -hmm. and went on and deleted that tweet. I mean, most of this happens on Twitter. Uh, and he deleted that tweet, but the movie comes out and, and then he starts in again and basically says, you know, you know, the reason that this movie's terrible is that uh, Fox wouldn't let me make my movie. And, uh, you know, and to a to degree, that's, you know, obvious. Uh, yeah. Because you, you had said you've seen it now. Uh, yeah, I watched it. I knew we weren't really going to get into like in depth on the movie, but I've been so curious about it. So I watched it today, actually. And you can tell that the movie wants to go one way and it does most of the movie. The part where you can tell where the director was trying to go is pretty interesting. Not always great. Um, But then you can definitely tell when the studio is like, nope, we got to go this way. It is kind of, it's definitely a movie that doesn't know where, what it's supposed to be because it's being pulled in different directions. Mm -hmm. It seems like this is the year of like directors just, speaking out like mm. mm-hmm. and and i i think i feel like it's kind of you know like joss whedon started it a little bit mm-hmm. I mean, like he was he's one of the first people that was like i don't care you know i i did avengers one i can talk bad about avengers two and what i don't like about it and you can kind of see where there were hiccups mm-hmm. in avengers two that were a result of disney and disney marvel saying hey this we need this to be in here because we're going to do a thor movie later and we need this in here because civil war is coming up and we need this in here and it it started to be like okay what is this movie now mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um but then you've also got people like you know like people that are really excited about properties like channing tatum uh he's a huge gambit fan now whether or not i want to see him as gambit you know that's whatever but he recently walked away from the gambit project so you know that somebody was up to something that really made him go you know what i don't want to be gambit anymore even though i'm a huge fan yeah that's interesting because that is something it's it's kind of like a ryan reynolds fighting for the deadpool thing it's that's something he's been very vocal about Mm -hmm. where you kind of get the assumption that the studio is like, okay, let's do that because he was rallying on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if he's then going to walk away from it, yeah, that's not a good sign. Yeah. What's, what's going on with that movie then, you know, it's gotta be bad. And then Edgar Wright, the whole thing with the Ant-Man Now, granted Ant-Man came out. Okay. Uh, but you know, at what point did Edgar Wright have to say, you know, um, this isn't what I want to do. You know, like I wanted to do a thing and you guys aren't okay with that. And, it's not really what I want to do. So, okay, we'll just agree to disagree and I'll walk away. Mm-hmm. Uh, this next one is a little bit meaty or it could be a little bit meaty because we're all arrow fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's coming from comicbook.com, And the headline reads when comics and wrestling get in the ring, the article itself is basically about all the different times where, um, the two worlds of professional wrestling and comic books have kind of collided, like all the famous mashups of uh, like a big example would be the fact that professional wrestling plays such a huge part in the origin of Spider-Man. 
uh, where before he realized, you know, that with great power comes great responsibility, he was looking to make a buck as a pro wrestler. And then in the movie that, uh, the wrestler Bonesaw McGraw was played by Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, so you yeah. See, oh yeah. Two minutes of playtime. <laughs> <laughs> so, the so you got the crap. You got all these. You've got all these moments in time where you've had people, you know, and the wrestlers will don apparel that looks looks very uh, mm-hmm. comic booky and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so now, I mean, like this is all basic. This article is basically riding off the heels of the fact that tonight on uh, on SummerSlam 2015, uh, Stephen Amell, Green Arrow, is going to match up against Stardust in a. Uh, in a tag team, a tag team match where it'll be uh, Arrow and Neville versus Stardust and Barrett. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, Amel's been uh, showing up at raw WWE events and uh, sitting in the, sitting in the front row kind of thing. And then Stardust comes in and he, his whole spiel has been, uh, you know, like, you know, there's no heroes and this whole thing. And so they've got this whole storyline worked out and, re- and it recently culminated in, uh, in Amel jumping the, jumping the barricade, getting into the ring and pummeling stardust in the middle of the ring and setting up a match <laughs> for SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. What do we think about this? I mean, like, is this a good idea? There've been campy, there've been campy uh, matches since like the very first WrestleMania, so, I mean, it's not unusual. I mean, the very first WrestleMania had Mr. T in it, I believe. Uh, we've had things like um, Sting and the Four Horsemen, where, where the Four Horsemen put him in a cage, and then RoboCop comes from the backstage and then tears the, the door off of the cage that Sting is locked in. So RoboCop comes to his aid. We've had Jay Leno face off against Dennis Rodman and, and uh, <laughs> Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I mean, we've seen ridiculous campy gimmick matches before but this is the first time where it's like okay now like we're getting really meta here we're gonna put the actor who plays a superhero in the ring and uh recent recent news he's even going to be wearing the arrow costume that is what that really surprised me i had heard some rumblings about you know um somebody like it must have been stardust trying to call out Stephen amell Right, and I was like, okay, they're gonna have that little, you're gonna have a little play thing, mm-hmm. like a little like play back and forth. Um, and then I seen that video clip of him like at the show and jumping in. I'm like, okay, so he's actually gonna do it. I didn't expect them. I didn't expect him to wear the arrow costume. I kind of didn't expect him to legally be able to, because now I noticed they made a point like the commentators always called him Stephen Amell, Stephen Amell. Um, I don't know if they all ever call him arrow or the arrow in the backstage thing where uh they're setting up the match triple h is all is all what it's gonna be the green arrow and the red arrow versus stardust you know like he he has to make light of it Uh uh, that's the thing is neville's finisher is called the red arrow are you serious i didn't know this seriously that's funny okay um yeah i was surprised by the costume thing i think was the most i I mean, it'd be weird, I guess, if he just went in there plain clothes or something. I think it's even the new costume. I think it's the sleeveless new Green Arrow costume. Well, for wrestling, it should be. Right. I guess that would almost kind of make sense in a like. I could see the show runners being behind it because that's promotion for the show. Mm-hmm. That's right. a big audience to tap into that might not already be watching Arrow. It's just the like I said, the costume things what surprised me because that kind of tips it towards the character of Arrow mm-hmm. wrestling. Yeah. And that almost plays into character rights. So I was a little surprised that uh, DC would be about it. I think it's just a, a magic moment type thing. <laughs> wrestling, it's totally fits wrestling. But yeah. if you watch Arrow, it kind of totally fits Arrow too. And <laughs> yeah. and uh, sorry, the I can't say his last name. The, Amel Stephen Amel. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know why it doesn't, it's like your name. It doesn't work in my mouth. Um, Just put an A in front of your name. It's Amel. A- Amel. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he totally seems like that guy too. So it just—I think it's just everything like worked and swirled together into like a beautiful little package that everyone will enjoy for its cheesiness. Yeah. So here's here's my prediction. 
he's not going to win because every other gimmicky thing that's ever happened, the guest wins. So like you don't guest, think they'll go that way this time? They, the guest always wins. Jay Leno and Dennis Rodman with DDP and uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Jay Leno wins. Well, what? <laughs> who's the bad guy in wrestling right now? I'm, I quit watching wrestling a long time ago. Oh, there's there's quite a few. But, but I mean, in this like, case, it Stardust. would be yeah. Stardust, right? Yeah, well, then he's going to lose. <laughs> Stardust is going to lose. Stardust is going to lose. He has to. He's the bad guy. Here's my, I was joking on Twitter, but I thought uh, it would be interesting if they basically are getting, um, you know, like double, triple, whatever teamed. And then you have a, you know, you have Sting come back. That would be my dream. But um, it seems like that would work with with this weird storyline they're trying to go with. I bet you they're going to get a big old thing and they're going to be like knocking him out with chairs or something and about to crush him. And then like the flash is going to run out and save the day. <laughs> It's going to be something like that. I joked about that, and I thought that would – and he was like, that wouldn't work. Uh, was it uh, Brandon online? Yeah. Like, that wouldn't work. It was like, all you do is you cut the house lights. That's what you do for everything. Just And then some sounds, and the guy's <laughs> knocked out, and and uh, the Flash is standing there when yeah, the lights yeah, come back yeah. up. Yeah, that's all you need mm-hmm. to do. You don't even uh, need Flash there. You just need, like, so, like, a, like, a fire zigzag across the floor, and they'll be like, oh, my God, that was the Flash. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. They'll yeah. never do it. They'll never do it, but that, man, that would be incredible. They should – hey, wrestling, do that. We want to see it. <laughs> Tonight. Do it. Tonight. No pressure. <laughs> so interesting. Okay. That would be one of the few things that might actually get me to start watching wrestling again because I got so well, So in that case, it's, you know, like it's brilliant because I think there are going to be a lot of people that probably sign in to the WWE Network for the $10 just to watch – just to watch that match. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of cross promotion, it's it's. I mean, it's 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 a no brainer. It's a brilliant move to do yeah. that yeah, kind is. of thing. The next one uh, is you know it's just kind of a reactionary deal. Um, not all that long ago, the Nerdist uh, posted this, and and the Nerdist. I'm I'm going to do the abbreviated headline because it, it's one of their movie morsel things. So it has yeah. all sorts of things. Movie morsel. Batman v Superman. Zod to have flippers instead of hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> Reaction. Uh. <laughs> Wait, what? So, first of all, Zod's in this movie, I guess. So he's not dead, unless it's a flashback. And he's got flippers. And in, in the news bit that they that they uh, talk about Superman, or Batman v Superman, uh, they basically talk about that point where it was like they're trying to call him to the set and he can't get in because he's got these flippers for hands and he can't open the door. And he's like, I almost got fired because I couldn't open the door and I had these flippers. Uh, so we're finding out all these things. Uh, first that general Zod's going to be there. And then second, he's got some kind of weird flippers, flippers for hands. Yes. Um, and this came from the actor, the yes. actor telling a story. There's two possibilities here that one kind of would make sense in a we just need to try to explain this flipper thing. Mm-hmm. And the other one is the one I hope it is. And it's more fun. Uh, the one theory that people have is that he turns into doomsday. Right. Which is why he'd have weird flipper hands or some type of like mutation going. Some kind of uh, prosthetic going on. Yeah. And that's obviously that's weird. But. And I haven't read it, but in the new 52, they had a big doomsday like virus thing where people would turn into a doomsday type creature from a virus. So that's a possibility if you're trying to explain why would this character have flippers Mm -hmm. and not be dead. (laughs) Or Uh, he's turning into a pinball machine. Or that. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's more logical when you think about it. Maybe Batman v Superman is actually about a pinball wizard named general Zod. (laughs) Yeah. Hot off, hot off of his tour in the phantom zone at his two week stint in Vegas. It's general Zod, the pinball wizard. Uh, my, 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 my other theory is, and this is the one I like is that the actor is trolling all the comic book news sites. Mm -hmm. Uh, with this insane story. I don't know if that's, I mean, I think he'd get in trouble because 
uh, that flipper headline. Yeah. Ne- it doesn't necessarily make the movie look good. <laughs> no, no. And they haven't, they've been kind of fighting back negative press since. Since uh, Batflick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but that's a lot more fun. I like the idea that that, that he would be trolling mm-hmm. the, because there's a lot of websites and, and the, uh, the, the, the nerdy, nerdy audience in general, uh, jumps all over rumors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it'd be a hard tempt. It'd be hard to fight the temptation to throw out just these insane, ridiculous, uh, things and watch people react to it. Well, you can't take people who love science and fantasy and fiction <laughs> things and not expect them to like create this possibility yeah yeah that's what that's what we do just like i'm just hey, i'm gonna tell him he's got flippers let's just see what they say what they come <laughs> up with let's just see what they do yeah well kind of uh, like the jared Le- uh, leto uh joker stuff you know it's like mm-hmm. well we can placate him if we tell him it's just a uh, homage and then we'll just we'll tell him it's it no that's really the joker because he's got tattoos and yeah, that'll work. No, it, no, it is, and you'll be okay with it, it because we're gonna release a trailer here in a week. That was a a nice morsel for our bites. Ah, I got one. <laughs> I, I'm amazed at myself. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> well yes, you know the, the nerdiest well morsel. Yeah. Yeah. She just she just like sat back like I'm done. <laughs> no more. That's Show, it. The show's over. Mike I've accomplished anything I needed to. <laughs> All right. What what's next? What do we got? Okay. So the last last one here. Um and it 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 goes back to the arrow thing. But uh it was recently uh reported and the headline reads Matt Ryan to reprise Constantine role on the CW's Arrow. And that one comes from hollywoodreporter.com. That yeah, this one I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, we fell off of Constantine real fast. I heard it got better, yeah. but it was real rough for a couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. Well, well, especially like the first two, two because they switched chicks, and it was confusing because they looked similar but not. Well, and there and- was just there was a couple of things I had beef with. But anyway, so Constantine, the show is done. It got canceled. It's not coming or not re- renewed, whatever. Yeah. Right. I think it's cool because he's established as the Constantine character. Mm-hmm. Right. He's good at that, I think. You know, I think that uh, given the right writing, the show would have done better. Yeah, I didn't mind the actor so much. Um, He's not I don't think he's the perfect Constantine, but I thought he was OK. Right. And it's cool for him that he gets to reprise the character, assuming he enjoys playing the character. And why not? You know, it seemed like a yeah. fun character to play. Mm-hmm. So I think it's cool because in a way it ties that universe and the CW DC universe, whatever you want to call it, the DC television universe together. When isn't isn't uh, NBC and uh, CW, aren't they like sister programs? Oh, they might be. I, I think they're all part of the same network. Uh, and for a while there... They were talking about bringing back Constantine, but putting it, putting him on the uh, on CW. Well, not CW, but one of the one of their cable outlets. Oh. So that would have unfettered him a little bit, and I was kind of hoping that they would go that route. Um, I'm okay, you know. Rather than no Constantine at all, I am uh, pretty happy to see that they're going to tie him into Arrow. And I guess uh, the speculation, or maybe it's been confirmed, is that they're going to explain the whole. Like heroes of or legends of tomorrow, uh, mm. spinoff. They're going to explain the return of uh, would it be White Canary, or yeah, without well, giving, giving too many spoilers of who that is. Uh, there's a supernatural element that's going to have to be involved in order to bring her back, and it makes sense if you're going to start introducing like heavy supernatural elements to that extent. In which I mean, I'm a, I, we're still behind on Arrow. But, um, which has been off, it's been a quite a while since that season ended. We're still all behind. Right, all right. But, uh, they don't have a whole lot of supernatural stuff going on. I mean, outside of superheroes in general. Yeah. But they always kind of tie that into science fiction elements for the most part. Well, and so Arrow's- it makes sense to bring Constantine in to introduce superhero uh, or uh, supernatural elements like that. Mm-hmm. And they don't like, like rely, like use it a lot. But 
Arrow's been doing a lot of the um, the, the Lazarus Batman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the the Batman bad guy, Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, my brain. I I have been awake for a very long time. And my brain's she, not she didn't functioning. Sleep last night. Oh, uh, we were we we were out late, and then she came home. She I, drank a monster at like midnight, and then she, we came home, oh. and she played Fallout Three all all night long. So. I, well, I played Fallout until like I looked out and the sun was up, and I'm like, okay, now if I go to bed, I'm not ever gonna fall. I'm I'm gonna sleep so long, I won't be able to sleep tonight, and I have to work next day. So just right. just forge through okay <laughs> but that makes my brain not work so well. <laughs> that makes my brain not work so well I, I make random weird connections from words but i can't think of names of things that i read all the time you know <laughs> yeah i'm kind of jazz i was kind of jazzed at that information though i thought it's kind of cool even though i wasn't super into the constantine show mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. like constantine as a character mm-hmm. a constantine show could work really well if it was handled very well mm-hmm. right NBC was a bad fit. I mean, yeah. there's all sorts of things you can't do on NBC, and mm-hmm. that's Constantine. Mm-hmm. You can't do Constantine on NBC. No. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. And I think that's a lot of what it, I mean, like, they made him too vanilla. But I think, yeah, Constantine seems like it's it's heavier and darker and should be on cable anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Vertigo title for crying out loud. Yeah. And if they wanted to, they could... I. Maybe these shows don't do so well, but you can do like it's the premise is perfect for a monster of the week type show where you've got like kind of a monster of the week. And then you also have the overarching plots. I mean, that's like very straightforward television, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if those shows do so well, but like like what was Supernatural on CW? Wasn't that kind of a monster of the week? And then you've got overarching plots. It's like Buffy. Yeah. yeah, but those all have like teenage romance crap. That's what carries those. I, I know, but that's true. Or n- not just teenage, but young, you know, whatever. Yeah. Young adult. That's true. That's and small, I, though. Constantine's mm-hmm. not, doesn't really seem like a, you know, the romantic type necessarily. They give him a teenage sidekick. And- yeah, no. yeah, they give, <laughs> they give him these chicks, but then he's like, I'm going to put you in front of this demon and you might die. And if you did, I you know, probably wouldn't care that much. I mean, you know, maybe. <laughs> well, well it's Constantine. So. Yeah. yeah Constantine, well, that's how he should be, at least. And that's also kind of a problem with having Constantine, Constantine as a lead character on, like, one of the major networks. Mm-hmm. Is if you're doing the character right, he's kind of a douche. He's not a good guy. No. I mean, he, he'll do good things. He- if, if it's he's like not oops, sorry. an evil villain, but if it's a, the forces of light against the forces of darkness, he's probably on the forces of light, but he's not going to, you know, save if, everybody if it's going to mean he's going to mm-hmm. fail. And those kind of. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Mainly, mainly, he wants to live. It's like, okay, he's on the forces of light, but it's more out of self preservation than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the last, uh, the last uh, talking point for this. Mega City, Judge Dread sized Grolic Bites, <laughs> <laughs> was uh, that I went to Kansas City Comic Con uh, two weekends ago. Not this, not this weekend, but the weekend before. We're going to have to go and like print out a big list and figure out how much it would cost and which ones we want to go to and like save the money. So I'll start saving money now since I'm starting to get my good checks back. Well, just to let you know, they recently, uh, they recently released the dates for Kansas City Plan- uh, Planet Comic Con Kansas City. And that's the big one. That's the biggest one I've been to. That's the one I wanted to go to, but Randy couldn't get it off. That's the one week the, like the one, one, one I, I couldn't really get wanted off. to go to and the one weekend he couldn't get it off. Of, yeah, of course. And that's how it works. Um mm-hmm. this week or this year, what it's gonna do is it's gonna sit literally on the last day of school, like the last work day. Oh no. It, it is gonna be May twentieth. 21st and 22nd and for me yeah that friday i don't have kids but that is the day that i usually you know like you can't put everything away until Mm -hmm. all the kids are gone Mm -hmm. so that's what friday is for is put all the all the stuff away so last year it was a little bit earlier it was in march and i was able to take friday off because it was just a in-service day Mm -hmm. and i spent i did the whole three days um this year, it's like, well, I guess it'll be a, I guess it'll be a day trip. I guess I'll go down on the twenty first, maybe. I don't know. 
So yeah, put it on your calendar, May 20th, 21st, and 22nd. That's uh, Planet Comic Con. Um, this one that I went to is called uh, Kansas City Comic Con, and they are kind of an offshoot of Planet Comic Con. I guess they were loosely uh, or, or partly part of the same team. Yeah, they're like, Planet Con was so awesome, but we couldn't fit it all, so it spilled over into an extra con. <laughs> right, right. Kind of, <laughs> kind of thing. Or, or they didn't get along, so they made their own con. Oh. I've heard rumblings of, of both variety, so I don't know what's true. But regardless, uh, Kansas City Comic Con was br- was brand new. This was the first time they'd ever tried it, and uh, I liked it. I thought it was fun. I went down there with uh, with Dave, who we had on the motorcycle clowns and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mm-hmm. that that episode. And uh, so that was the first time I've been down to a big con with with Dave, and uh, we had a good time. Um, most of our adventures were actually not related to the con itself because I tried uh, Airbnb. And last time we had a really, like Holly and I had a really good experience with it. This time it was okay, but it was the first time I'd ever done it solo. And it was like this one little, little apartment room. It was really close to the convention center, so it was perfect. But um, like we had to pick up the key in a weird location and the guy... Uh, wasn't sure which key it was, uh, uh, <laughs> and so like he, we were, like at the time of pickup, I'm I'm uh, trying to communicate with with the guy and and the guy that I'm supposed to pick up the key from, and we sat there for a little while trying to get the key. Other than that, everything went fine. But uh, yeah, it was a first year con. Uh, basically, I went down because they had some pretty fun guests that weren't at Planet Comic Con, uh, including Colin Baker, and that was. <gasps> That was the reason. Like, I was going because of Colin Baker. Yeah, that's awesome. You know what we need to do? We need to buy a GoPro and, like, wire up Jesse and (laughs) (laughs) send him to these things. (laughs) There there we go. Yeah. (laughs) They've been, uh, like, they've really been cracking down on uh, what you can do at cons as far as interviews and stuff. But they they, they didn't say anything about just having a gopro on yeah it's not, yeah it's not technically an interview at that point is it it's me just live blogging yeah, or yeah. Vl- vlogging whatever it's called mm-hmm. yeah that'd be so. awesome put you on a we'll put you on a live feed yeah yeah just stream it all out <laughs> the uh the, so meeting meeting the doctor was the absolute first thing that we did um and we were struck immediately by the fact that you could actually get in line and not wait for very long. So it's just like everything I loved about this con isn't necessarily a good sign, but like you could get in line and it was like maybe six deep. Whereas, oh, nice. wow. whereas when we meet, when we met uh, Amy Pond, when we met Karen, uh, it was, it was like, we, we stood in that line for an hour just, An just hour to, for Amy Pond. If, right, right. And maybe 15 God. minutes for the actual doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But you said it was – and I imagine part, particularly with a, uh, a first-year con. You well, said yeah. it, was, it was kind of a lighter crowd. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and they, still had, they still had over like 10,000 people in oh, attendance wow. over the weekend. But uh, you could get into any panel you wanted. It was so awesome in that mm-hmm. regard. You know, like I said, it's not necessarily a good sign, but I I don't know. I think 10,000 people, I I have no frame of reference, but 10,000 people sounds like a pretty good first year to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, O Comic Con here in Omaha was a really well attended con for Omaha, and it was maybe 7,000. So they didn't even touch the 10,000 range. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Kansas City, you would expect better turnout than than Comic Con and and they did they had it so mm-hmm. it was good. Did you did you get a chance to talk to Colin Baker much? Okay, so you know the whole uh, the whole have a question kind uh-huh. of thing. Uh-huh. Was, so Dave went first and Dave Dave's chatting him up. I'm doing really well and I get up and I'm like, my first thing is I'm like, thank you for coming to the Midwest. So I so I did it again <laughs> because <laughs> because this is Colin Baker and I know my audience and I know he takes things and twists them and whatnot and that's basically all we talked about. He's like, "Oh, is this the Midwest? I thought it was Kansas City," <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we talked about. I'm like, "Ah, oh, I squandered it. <laughs> I squandered it by being a highfalutin Midwesterner instead of just a thanks for coming to Kansas City." <laughs> so i mean that's basically what we talked about he was very friendly and very 
you know, he's a, he was nice. It was just, it was like, oh no, this isn't what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about where we are. <laughs> So what what my question was going to be was that he does all these like his doctor uh, in the big finishes. He's always being possessed or playing somebody else like in Curse of Davros. He body swaps with Davros. He body swaps with Perry at a certain point. And uh, I think it was uh, uh, the Ronnie elite or the elite of the Ronnie or whatever. Um he uh, he plays Frobisher because Frobisher is a shapeshifter, and so he turns into the Doctor to, as a, as a more human form than a penguin. So Colin does all these things, and so I was just like, "Is there anybody you wish you'd play?" You know, like that was going to be my question. Like, who uh-huh. who would you want to play? You know, you've done all these other you you've been Davros. Who else would you want to be? And that was going to be my brilliant question, and I never got to ask it. <laughs> Because I said, welcome to the Midwest. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. I know, that, I, I know that he does this, too. You're like, I've heard him in interviews. I've heard lots of interviews with him. So it's like, he's very sarcastic and very much takes the thing you say and twists it. Like, should've just, I should have just been really quiet and just, just abruptly went into my question. <laughs> really matter of fact. <laughs> Don't be nice. Just be. <laughs> just, yeah. You know. He was the main guest that I met. And uh, Dave went and met. Um, Pam Greer was there as well. She's my favorite. My favorite, I think. She's. Of the, yeah. Of the. Uh, yeah. Of the Archer cast. And she, she was cool. She was like talking to Dave and she's like, you guys in Kansas City know how to party. <laughs> he's like, well, actually, I'm from Nebraska. So basically, we have just taller corn. <laughs> he's like, oh, that's all right. I'm from Colorado. I know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> then we met um, Butch Patrick, who is uh, Eddie Munster. And we just talked to him a little bit. He had been in uh, Omaha not too long ago. And uh, there were there were other good gu- good guests. But, you know, it was like on a budget. So I couldn't go crazy yeah like right mm-hmm. right next to pam greer was sean astin from uh lord of the rings and goonies and then uh-huh. uh right next to colin baker was the red yeah. power ranger and i was like oh if i had more money you guys see colin baker though yeah yeah and i got to we got to be in second row of his panel which was awesome so i mean like yeah i have nothing bad to say about the con you know i obviously they're gonna need to grow in order to survive but uh, I also got to meet uh, J. O. Barr. Oh, nice! The cat dancer. <laughs> the cat dancer. <laughs> that the is cat dancer o- himself. He, obviously, he doesn't want to be called that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but yeah. And he was he was just he was awesome. And he was selling like prints for ten bucks, signed prints for ten dollars. And I was like, Ugh. if I wasn't on such a you know, I was just like, oh, I need to eat later. I don't know how much money I need. So it was like one of the first places we stopped. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll be back. And then you never come back because you're embarrassed. You know, you can go like three days before you starve. <laughs> 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 and that's what that's what I should have done. $10 for a signed print from J.O. Bars. Right. That's a steal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the other big moment for me was, uh, I mean, like literally there were the two top two things on my list were, uh, getting to meet the doctor, obviously. And then meeting, um, Joe Flanders from Ninja and pirate. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I can't remember which episode it was, but we reviewed, uh, Ninja and pirate as one of our webcom, uh, webcomic recommendations. So that was really cool. And I, uh, if you were on, if you were on Twitter, uh, we posted different crazy pictures and, it was it was a good time. It was one of my one of my favorite moments of the con. So yeah, those are those are good pictures. So yeah, I, I can't recall anything else huge, but you know, like everything I wanted to do on my list, I did it. And you got a picture of yourself with another doctor. Yeah, right, right. So, so wait, you got two. I've got seven and six now. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I was I was pretty excited. Sorry, I always, I always go back to Doctor Who. <laughs> no, no, that's why. That's really why I was there. It was kind of nice to be there uh, with Dave and also not be behind the table. You know. Oh yeah, I'm sure. It's nice once in a while to go and just be an attendee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because the the GoPro show would be boring if 
we were, <laughs> we were sitting there watching it. Yeah. Oh, to people. listen to people are giving the same spiel about his comic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's the shortest spiel ever. It's it's uh, So I draw a comic, and it's a monkey who drives a tank. Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's good, though, because I imagine if you've got, like, a complex premise, it gets pretty old telling people yeah. the same pitch over and over like that. When I used to, I used to be a lot more like, it's kind of like Jack Kirby or, you know, it's, it's kind of like those old war comics, but if they were a monkey, like, no, he drives a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's not much headier than that. I mean, what do you, what, what you see is what you get. He drives a tank. He drives a tank. Come on. He's got a funny helmet on his head. He's a monkey. <laughs> if you're not sold by now, I'm not going to win you over. Right, right, right. <laughs> if you, if you looked at our you looked at our banner right there's a, there's a zombie there's a monkey and there's a tank what else you need do you get it <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a brilliant pitch <laughs> it's gonna be the next season morty we're gonna do a whole thing there's gonna be monkeys they're gonna have helmets it's gonna be awesome just 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 trust me on this it's it's uh, uh, it's gonna be great, dude. Oh, I'm really impressed. With, I didn't even know you watched Rick and Morty. I'm impressed right. with that impression, man. Mm-hmm. I love Rick and Morty. They're awesome. It'd be, yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's so yeah, good. Um, they they uh, do the new episode on uh, AdultSwim.com, I, I think, uh, and it's open for like the week or whatever. So oh, the nice. only episode I haven't seen is the very first episode of season two. Freaking, we pay. For Netflix and Hulu and these sites because cable sucks, but then they take so long to get to yeah, everything we love. Yeah, there's certain shows that like yeah, and Adult Swim's real bad about it. I mean, I've noticed, I noticed they must have some deal with Hulu now, so they're getting a lot more seasons of some of their other shows. But um, Adult Swim in particular has never really jumped on that bandwagon like CW, for example, where you can watch the new episode the day after. Right, right. Um, Some of the Fox shows do that too. You can watch, uh, you can watch the WWE Raw stuff, uh, Raw and SmackDown. You can watch them like the next day, mm-hmm. but you know you only get the six episode run. You know, like there's mm-hmm. there must be two different like tiers of of access because you can basically watch all of the modern Doctor Who on Hulu, mm-hmm. uh, and and a lot of the classics, but then like. Rick and Morty, it's one season, period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I don't even want to know, like, know what kind of uh, licensing negotiations go on, but it's definitely it's definitely weird. And mm-hmm. some, some channels and production studios are much more stingy with their content, it seems. Right. Yeah, some of them probably get a lot more viewers and money from their shows than some of the others do. Well, sure, but everybody loves Cartoon Network. They have such great stuff. Okay. All the things. All the things. I even I have music that is like Cartoon Network music because it's so great. Oh, yeah. the uh was it uh Jacob in in college, he had uh, a voice message or he had a v- answering machine back when that was a thing. You know, kids, we used to have a machine, an, a separate machine that was just for answering our phone when we weren't home. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, that was a thing. Uh, his answering machine message was uh, basically the powerhouse theme that they would do that. Da, 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 da. And oh, he yeah, played yeah. that whole thing, like the whole extended version, not the short version you hear <laughs> on, on the commercial breaks. It was the whole thing. And he just let it play. And then at the end, he's like, I'm making a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that was, that, was his, that was his thing. And so if you wanted to leave him a message, you had to listen to that whole theme song. <laughs> it's related, but off topic uh, to make us feel old uh, with the phone thing. A kid asked, why do you say uh, you're hanging up when you get off the phone? Oh. Because they don't ever they have don't to hit, know, they hit a button. Yeah, their phone never hung <sighs> on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's crazy. Uh-huh related to that but a total aside i think it was one of those like it was probably a link to some page that uh george takei uh yeah you know posted but um it was like a basically a bunch of facebook posts to make you feel old 
Oh yeah. And one of them was somebody was like, like, ha ha. I just found a phone from the nineties. Why did they have a hashtag button? Twitter wasn't even around in the nineties. <laughs> oh. I was like, Oh my God. Oh. And that, that ladies and gentlemen is what creates, uh, angry old men and women of comics. And that's the only reason this show exists. Is yeah. there people out there that make us angry? Yeah. Flipper, so. flippers on. And <laughs> what was <laughs> there? I can't even remember the stories we did. <laughs> <laughs> flippers on and, and the thing. Without pants. Is, Why doesn't man. the thing have pants? You, you got to treat yourself, Morty. Go, go see the pirates <laughs> of the pancreas, Morty. I mean, you know, you maybe make it out alive, but. If you don't, you got to treat yourself. <laughs> Fantastic. That's fun. <laughs> so we have a Facebook group, like a group where yeah. we want you to come talk to us about stuff. Obviously, we, we have a, a whole lot more to say than we intend to say. So you should mm -hmm. join us there and say these things with us. We've got hey. a Facebook page, but like they don't let us say things. They don't let us say things like we want to say. Well, like we'll say them and you guys won't hear them. It's true. If you're in our group, you'll see the things we say. So facebook.com slash group slash Grawlix podcast, as you might expect. Um, I, I, the group's open, I believe. And Melanie's on it. Melanie's there and yeah. she comments and she says things. Well, I once. It I, proves I <laughs> that you exist on the internet. I know. Well, yeah, that's the only one. I'm actually, with his story, made me a little... I don't. I'm not, not going to get on Twitter. I'm just not. But it would be like it'd be like making a, a, a um. What do you call them? A, a, a pen pal, and then you get to go and meet them at cons, and it's like <gasps> great, like family <laughs> reunion, or like like uh, talking to a guy online, and then you get to meet him, and then you fall in love, and you're together for years. You're talking about us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> But no, I'm not going to go. It's like, are you talking about me? What guy am I going to meet? I, I, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> that's not going to happen. If you go to a con and you don't come home because you fell in love with some guy on Twitter, it's over. <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm just done. <laughs> it's over. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be over. <laughs> it's it, could be a, it, could be a, it could be a whole thing. There's, there's not. You can't have any hangups. There's no rules. <laughs> you're, you're really bringing down the vibe of the room <laughs> so join the group and uh talk to us we, yeah. we want to talk about things uh i'll try to you know and you can talk to us about the things we talk to on uh, talk about on these episodes but also if you just want to talk about comic book stuff or doctor who stuff we won't be able to help ourselves but jump in and comment on it so mm -hmm. talk to us there yeah it's 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 I like the idea because it's a little – It's I like Twitter. Twitter works out very well. But sometimes you want to have some nice like long-form conversations. Um, so that's that's a perfect place to do it. And it's easier than a forum because forums are a little messy. But also everybody's already on Facebook. So you don't have to sign up for anything extra. Mm -hmm. right. And and uh, I, I'm not fast-paced. So that's one of the reasons I'm not going to do Twitter because by the time I respond to something, it will be like a month later. And uh, on Facebook, uh, people are okay with that. Yeah, it hangs in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I've gone and liked and commented on somebody's things like three years later, and then they still <laughs> respond to me. Yeah, you know, it bumps it up. On yep. the feed. Yeah, exactly. All right, I got nothing else to say. <laughs> this is it was, it was an enormous bite size. Uh, you were like Attack on Titan size bite. Yeah, it, yeah. This is a mouthful. <laughs> it's, it's huge. Bite. It's huge, guys. That's it. It's over. This, this episode's going to need the Heimlich maneuver. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have to retire this now. So, uh, yeah, get we we can't get any more bites in the mouth. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. But uh, yeah, it might be a while before we have another bite. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you're full. We hope you're full. But hey, it's okay because guess what? We've got another episode coming out. Uh, we'll be recording it in like two weeks, and you will get it in like three. And what are, what are we doing on that? I think we record it in a week, and you'll get it in two. Oh, okay. Oh. Even sooner. Uh, so we're going to talk about – I'm excited. I don't want to give away our, our, our reviews, but I think we're going to have a lot of like good things to say about the things we read. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about Harold, 
Lovecraft and Tesla, which is this cool, um, I think it's coming out through, or it's it's published through Action Lab, mm-hmm. Action Lab, um, this cool indie book that it's one of those, like, it takes um, historical characters and puts this, like, crazy fantasy sci-fi twist on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Lovecraft and Tesla, come on. That's yeah. a selling point in the title. Yep. Uh, so we read the first six inch issues of that, which is actually two volumes worth of uh, of their trades. And we'll talk about that. Super excited. Mm-hmm. And we're also going to talk about The Walking Dead Volume 3. I don't remember which issues that covers, but it's the third volume, trade paperback. And um, I'm excited to talk about that, too, because there's there's... A lot of things. Mm-hmm. And, and Randy finally realizes how difficult it is for me not to talk to him about this stuff. Reading, <laughs> reading this, I because Melanie's always like, when we're watching the show or reading the comics, she's like, okay, can I just tell you about this thing? I'm like, no, you're going to spoil it. And then I was reading this book and I went to Melanie. I was like, how could you not tell me about these things? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> this is and, way better, except and, for that part. <laughs> and then I, w- I was like, I was like, how can you sit there when we're reviewing these early issues, knowing what's going to happen? How can you stand sitting there listening to me and Jesse talk about this stuff? Uh, because it's kind of insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. And you know all the things. I try really hard not to make faces, and sometimes I still do. And I'm like, what was that face? I You're know. giving me a spoiler right you, now, aren't you? You shouldn't be allowed to look at me, man. <laughs> I do need to put up like a wall or something. <laughs> uh, so, cool, yeah. yeah. Get out the D&D. Uh... Hey, hey, what are you making <laughs> over there? You making a sandwich? <laughs> I, I, I can smell the peanut butter J- jokes on you it's nutella <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh and then i'm sure we'll talk about other stuff uh as maybe maybe six doctor you, maybe you, some you, six te- teasing me with that i know i do i really do want to talk about uh some six doctor audio play where uh mm-hmm. he finally gets a proper regeneration so i listened to that mm-hmm. and then i fired up the next like chronological episode of the TV show where um, oh yeah you see kind of the regeneration and i didn't realize it but when they regenerate him it's just uh it's just seven in a blonde wig at first yep yeah <laughs> they just so, don't like really show him but he I mean, just they... flips over and it starts before you really see his face but they just had a blonde wig on on him yep. and then switched to his normal hair see if they could do it then why can't they do it now in Fantastic Four? What are you talking? About? <laughs> Make a blonde wig, wig work. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no doubt. You couldn't I don't, tell. Huh? I don't know if we we didn't even really cover that, did we? The, like, no, the I bad, don't think. I don't, wig. I don't think so. So maybe. yeah, the recuts had a bad wig. It's bad too. If you haven't been hearing the things, because that that has been a that has been an obvious thing. It's so that obvious. Complains about they're like, hey, the wig. It's, it's really bad and it's so obvious that they they can they can make a stretchy shoots. man they can make a man out of rock and a man that's completely made of fire but, but they can't. the invisible person doesn't get a good wig <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's the invisible girl I, I, oh my god she doesn't you, you, even oh. can't can't even blend in the hairline come on they didn't even need her there for reshoots they'll be like we're doing reshoots she's like i'm invisible just put my voice in there <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That really wouldn't have worked, but it sounded fun. How do we end the bite? Uh, I don't know. I just kind of say goodbye and be good. And uh, yeah. Stay off my lawn. Yeah. Quit quit screwing up comics. Yeah, stop yeah. it. <laughs> I'm just going to be in a, that, That's this episode. I'm I'm a cartoon angry man. I'm, I'm Rick. You guys are, <laughs> you guys are, you're screwing it up. Just stop writing them. <laughs> uh, I uh, I lost it. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Where, where are we going? <laughs> we're off the road um, we've been off the rails for a while so i don't remember i was listening to a, some other podcast and i'm sorry i can't credit them because i don't remember what it was but in superman 2 superman killed zod mm-hmm. did he 
What? Yeah. He threw him down a big crevasse. Crevasse. Crevice. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't die. He didn't even put him. He put them all back in the Phantom Zone at the end, didn't he? Did he? I think so. Or was that? Oh, you know what? You're probably right. I don't know. I remember I'm, the, the chick maybe, in, maybe the, a, in the in the in the the or was it guy. the Richard Donner cut? Maybe that cut was slightly different. That could be. I know the theatrical a lot better than the Donner cut. So I, I've watched them both. I can't recall. I can't separate them. I haven't. Well, yeah, they're so mm-hmm. they're similar, but not. Cutting all that. 